Hey guys, welcome back to Crafting with Ainsley Gray. This is your captain speaking. Today I have a co-pilot, a co-captain, uh, an executive officer. Mm -hmm. um, he goes by Vulcan and he is my son and he's going to be helping me out today. Today we are kidding up Dragon Attack by Diamond Art Club. And if you haven't yet checked out my unboxing on it, um, you should go check that out. It'll be in the eye. Um, and so, yeah, we're, what I'm going to do right now is, uh, because this is for my husband's birthday, I want to do the um, canvas and put the washi tape on the canvas before I kit up the drills. Because if he comes home from work and sees me putting drills away, that's nothing new. Mm. So he won't necessarily know, but if he sees the image, he'll know that it's for him because, yeah, we've been married 20-something years. There are certain things a man just knows by looking. So um, I normally use parchment paper, so I'm, this is a, a, a new thing for me, and I'm going to try it this way. I make no promises that I won't get annoyed with it and just go the parchment paper route, but... I'm going to grid this off and the way this works if you are new to this process is um, I like to work in sections so um, the plastic cover tears weirdly if you don't use like a washi tape or something um, and then you can score it with a knife or a pair of scissors I'll probably use scissors like I said, I don't know if I'll keep it this way. I may go back to the parchment paper tried and true that I use all the time. Um, and I can show you how I do that if I do end up deciding to do that. So we've got the sections that I want going down, up and down. Then we'll have to do the ones going side to side. So while Ainsley Gray is um, doing this, I'll kind of describe what I do um, outside of being her son. Um, Which you are very good at being my son, by the way. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of freelance voice acting, and I am also known as the resident Google for my friends and such. Oops, um, I ran out of washi tape. Yeah, you got it right at the end as well. So, um, I may use parchment paper just because I'm out of washi tape. I don't have a whole lot of washi tape. That was actually from uh, a goodie bag that I got in the mail uh, when I ordered something. But um, that would be how you would do it if you were to use washi tape. Now, we're going to kit up these drills and while we're doing that I am going to um, answer well we're both going to answer questions why don't you explain a little bit about the tag we're doing today um, we have just a list of questions that tell you guys uh, about ourselves um, and we will be answering those as we work on kidding up the drills so you get to understand your mm, captain and executive officer a bit more so our first question is what is our favorite color um all along from the time i was really little my favorite color has been blue but as i've gotten older i'm really digging red and gray and purple so I still really like blue, but I also have added colors to it. What about you? Uh, so, this is an odd question for me because I know I have a bias for my favorite color of all time, which is orange because um, someone very dear to me, his favorite color is orange, and whenever I see orange, I think of them. But besides orange, my favorite color, just because I love how it looks and everything, has to be 
like a dark purple. I even dyed my hair dark purple for a while before I decided, yeah, no, it doesn't look good on me. I think aquamarine looks best on you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is my favorite color and that is Graves' favorite color. Our next question, well, uh, Ainsley Gray is... You can just call me Gray or you can yeah. call me Julie. I have mentioned that my yeah. name is Julie and why I use Ainsley Gray, but you can call me Gray, you can call yeah. me Julie. Well, yeah, while Gray is cutting those up, uh, is what is your favorite cultural activity? Um, I don't really have any cultural activities. Um, my culture is American. Um, I am a Heinz 57 as far as um, culture and nationality go. Um, so I don't know that I have a favorite cultural activity. What I do know, though, uh, something that's very important to me and that um, affects a lot of the way I live my life is having a close-knit family, which you've grown up with. Yeah. So, um, I know, um, how has it been, you know, how has it, what has it been like growing up in, in a family environment where family closeness is so... Um, in, intense or, or important, I guess? Um, honestly, uh, since I have no reference point outside of that, really, because it's always been this way since I am the youngest, um, I will, I can explain the impact that it's had in my relations with other people. Yeah, that'd other be people. interesting. Um... Like, because I am so used to such a close-knit family, my friend group is also extremely close-knit. We are basically ride or die. So do you have a lot of friends, or do you have just a few that you're really, really close to? I have a very small group that I am extremely close to. It's like four or five people. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I mean, I have acquaintances and I know people, but um, the ones I, that I consider, you don't consider friends, them friends, right? The, the I'm ones very I... much the same way. Like mother, like son. Oh uh, well, yeah, you grew up uh, with that. You know, look into this is what a healthy relationship is. Yeah. Um, and all of your guys' romantic relationships, you and your other siblings. Mm -hmm. Um. You are all with, um, you all date seriously. There was no fortuitous dating, really. Yeah. Um, like, my first girlfriend, I am still with after three years. Right. That is exactly what I mean. Yeah. Which um, boggles people's minds. Well, and you guys grew up with, um, you know, me and your dad have been married and happy the entire um your entire life so and we're very close we spend a lot of time together uh both as mom and dad but also as um husband and wife so mm -hmm. you i think seen a um a healthy version or a healthy model of mm -hmm. what a healthy relationship looks like so yeah. The best way to sort these to begin with is we're going to do in decades. So the 200s, the 300s, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So I'm going to move these all over to you and I'm going to start ordering them numerically. So that's an 8, so the 3, nine, 9, Okay. Nine, ten. So what's the next question there, bud? Um, well, I didn't answer my favorite cultural activity because... Oh, that's true. Yeah, um, on my father's side, we are heavily Irish. Like, so Irish that our blood is straight Guinness. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, we don't do a, a lot of common Irish family things. 
So I think I'm well, we to... actually talk about our feelings, which most of our people. The joke is that you I'm know I'm going to put all of my feelings right here, and then one day I'll die. Yep, pretty much. Bonus points if you get that. Um, so I'm going to replace favorite cultural activity with favorite family activity. Okay. Um, which definitely has to be our tabletop games. Oh yeah, we are role players. If you don't know what that is, um, um, hmm. If you don't know what that is, how do how would you define? Oh, this is free time. How would you define uh, role playing to somebody who didn't know what it was? Think acting on a stage, but small scale, and creating a story as you go. Impromptu acting. Yeah, yeah impromptu I'm... acting on a small scale. Um. But yeah, so we are very much gamers. Uh, we have a family game that we do every week when people are here. Uh, mm. Currently, Aaron is up with your sister. And yeah. uh, so we haven't been doing it. But yeah, I would say tabletop, uh, our tabletop sessions are something yeah. that I love, this love, love. This has to go at the very end because it's, it's a, a four digit Yeah, I've got the 3,000s over here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I am going to do some role-playing oriented videos. Um, and that may not be your cup of tea, and that's okay. But it's something that I and my family are very much um, involved in. So, yeah. next question. What so, is your favorite drink? Um, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. I'm not of age, so I'll be just answering non-alcoholic. Uh, my favorite drink, well, if we're talking wine, I am a Moscato girl. I like barefoot Moscato the most, but, and, and yes, I am aware that it's very, very sweet. That's what I like about it. Um, if we're talking, uh, hard liquor, um, rum and Coke usually, but I haven't had one of those. And Oh, and Carol Ann's. Carol Ann's is a cream liqueur. It's kind of like Bailey's that we do around the holidays a lot. My um, in-laws, before they passed, um, shared that um, tradition of having Carol Ann's around Christmas and New Year's. Um, I don't know if that's 999 or... The it's a 939. Uh, yeah. th that's the navy blue that everybody thinks is black. Yeah. So, um, that is my favorite, those are my favorite alcoholic drinks. Non-alcoholic favorite is coffee. Coffee, 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 and if I'm drinking a soda, it's a code red all the way. So, my favorite drink, non-alcoholic, is, um... I well, love this color. This is like yeah, one of my it's, favorite colors. Um, definitely coffee. I grew up in a family of coffee drinkers. Yeah, which is why I'm not quite sure why your sister does not drink coffee. She does not like it. It baffles my mind. Yeah, but the thing is, is that I have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. So I don't like coffee for the caffeine that it gives me because... I could live without it. I like it for the actual taste of the coffee, of the bitter notes and everything. Um, but if we're talking non-coffee, then probably tea. Uh, specifically, the cinnamon apple tea that I had recently. I have fallen in love with it. If you haven't had a cinnamon apple tea or a herbal tea, that is... That would be my go-to. Oh, I also need to make a um, a correction because I said there were two ABs in this kit, and there are not. There are three. One, two, three. So I wanted to, you know, underline that I was incorrect when I did the unboxing. There are three ABs in this color or in this kit. Sorry, Vulcan. Mm, it's fine. Um. So the next question is, what is your favorite fairy tale? Hmm. I really, really like Alice in Wonderland um, because I like the idea of nonsense and things being ridiculous. 
Um, but, okay, so we're going to put these in order now. We've got the 100s. And then, here, turn them so that you can see them because I'm going to be asking you for them. 200, 300s, a singular 400, 500s, mm. a singular 600, 700. Um, so I do really do like Alice in Wonderland. I like the idea of, of the nonsense and silliness of it all. But, um... I also am, um, hmm, yeah, I'd have to say that one is my favorite. Um, I like fairy tales as a general rule, but that one is probably my favorite. What about you? Um, I don't remember that many fairy tales, so, but... I'm going to tell my favorite version of a fairy tale, of the, specifically Alice in Wonderland. Okay. There was this book series that I read a while ago called Into the Looking Glass that I'm pretty sure you that, actually Yes, I have. That, I, I think I introduced you to that. Story. Yeah, and that started to like, I fell in love with it. Yeah, and, all of you guys are readers. Yeah. And so that is my favorite take on a fairy tale. But my favorite, um, like, very high fantasy story ever is just H.P. Lovecraft's entire universe. Uh, yeah. A Lovecraft. It's very dark, guys, if you haven't read H.P. Lovecraft. Um, it is very dark. It's very psychological horror, but I adore psychological horror. That so, is something about me. It that's is. where Cthulhu comes from, is yep. HP Lovecraft. So, um, I will include a link in the uh, description below on where you can find Mr. Lovecraft's works and also into the Looking Glass. Um, mm. So that if you're interested in that, in those books, you can track them down. Um, What's the next question? Uh, what is your favorite food? Uh, see, the problem with favorite foods is I have too many to be, you know, to choose a singular favorite. Um, but I think my favorite type of food is, and, and this, a lot of it has to do with uh, proximity at this point because I never get it or very rarely do I get it but New Mexican food I miss New Mexican food um, and uh, the reason I am familiar with New Mexican food is I grew up in New Mexico you guys grew up in New York but I grew up in New Mexico um, so I really do miss it so I'm going to put these labels on, Vulcan, and then I will ask you for the color. Mm. Uh, my favorite food has to be one um, that I only learned about recently, like only within the last couple of years. Box tea, also known as Irish potato pancakes. I thought you were going to go with pho. Oh, no, that's that's Aaron. Yeah. And if you've never had box tea, I suggest trying it at least once. And um, one, it goes back to my Irish heritage. I am very, very prideful of my Irish heritage. And that is probably one of the reasons why I like it so much. It's also just extremely rich. And while I don't like that in like uh, potato soup, baked potato 126? soup. 126? What? 126. 126. I don't like that in like uh, baked potato soup. I love that in box tea. Right. Um, so the next um, question is, what is your favorite music genre? Uh, that is a tough one because I listen to all kinds of different genres. Um, 
I it's easier to list what genres I'm not um, really into um, although I like music from just about every genre um, my favorite is probably like 80s or um, folk folk music mm. what about you um, that is, is also extremely hard because I grew up around you and my brother Aaron, whose music taste is so eclectic that you my could probably too. make a genre out of it. Um, but my all-time favorite, the thing that I'll go to no matter what, is sea shanties. Really? I thought you were going to say EDM. EDM is a close second, um, but sea shanties. So um, I'm big time rug riding the struggle bus here trying to get the paper off of this sticker. Seems more like a struggle subway than a struggle bus at this point. Yeah, right? Um, and if you guys are looking for a good shanty group, I doubt many of you are, Look up the Longest Johns. They have a new album coming out in like June or July, which I'm super pumped for. Um, also, talking about um, you know uh, more esoteric music. Um, what is the the High Kings we listen to a lot? Which yeah, the, that Irish is Irish music. folk music. Right. Um, I need uh, one thirty eight. One thirty eight. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. Um, and um, I really like the High Kings, so. Yeah, they've got really good folk music that I adore as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's not strange to come home and hear him or Aaron singing sea shanties. And, you know, it, it's not just a bit or, a, you know, a funny bit. It They really do it and they really enjoy it. Yeah. To the point where I have annoyed some of my friends. Really? Yeah. Because some shanties are super repetitive, like Old Maui. You say that name like 20 different times during the song. Yeah, I could see where that would be. It would become annoying after yeah. a while. Alright, next question. Um, what is your favorite physical activity? Physical activity. I really like yoga. I really like yoga. I haven't been doing it enough because I'm like, oh, but I want to do this thing. I want to do all the things and I only have a certain amount of time. But I like hiking too. Um, and I hike with you guys a lot. Yeah. Because you like to hike too. So I would say that's probably my favorite physical activity. My favorite physical activity? Uh, yeah, I love that awkwardness. My... Uh, um, my favorite physical activity, well, I may not say it right after I do it, uh, 141. uh, PT, uh, 341. 141, oh, 141, not 341. Um, yeah, uh, PT, physical training. Since, um, in my high school, they have a JRTC program, um, and every Friday we do a, a lot of exercise called PT. And I, I like it because there's so much variety in it. Yeah, you've gotten some guns um, doing Thanks to that. PT. Yeah. yeah. So that has to be my favorite physical activity. What is your favorite quote? Again, that's hard. Uh, there are so many. Currently, um, one of my absolute favorite quotes is um, when the pain of where I'm at is greater than the fear of where I'm going, I will move. And I will put a card here with the uh, author if I can find it. I also like don't judge my life on the chapter you walked in on and um, all who wander are not lost. Yeah, so my favorite quote, 
I am extremely into philosophy, and there's also a really good, great philosophy podcast um, on Spotify called Philosophize This. I'll if you're put a link philosoph- down down below. Yeah. Um, so my favorite quote from every philosopher, any philosopher ever, has to be extremely old but extremely good um we are what we repeatedly do excellence then is not an act but a habit from aristotle Uh, i love that yeah i do love that that is awesome and so very true yeah um because humans are habitual creatures yes we are um which is why Old habits are so hard to break. Old habits die hard. But my f- my second favorite quote, and it's my favorite nonsensical quote from a um, philosopher, um, has to be from Diogenes of Sinope. So he busts into Plato's... Um, school one day, the academy, with a completely plucked chicken and says, behold a man. Because Plato, a few days prior, had described a man as any featherless bipedal animal. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Got yeah. It. Diogenes is my favorite philosopher. Oh, Diogenes sounds like he's very sarcastic. Yes. He That's was sarcasm. the world's first shit poster sarcasm is his native language yep 155 yeah so my favorite non-famous quote has to be from my brother playing um a leprechaun um D character does not work on a chastity belt <laughs> i had forgotten about that so yeah um we we have uh, a sense of humor. Of, uh, it's a strange sense of humor, but it is. It does exist. It's just kind of bizarre. Mm. Um, so I also like some Emerson quotes that I am not remembering off the top of my head, but I love Emerson. Um, next question. What is your favorite snack? Oh, if I want something sweet, it's, that's a tough call, because I am very much a, I like sweet things. I am riding the struggle bus again with a sticker. Oh my goodness. Um, Maybe you should invest in a bike. You're right. Um, sweet. Uh. It, it it I like ice cream. I like um cookies. I like banana laffy taffy. Um my favorite salt ooh uh, butter popcorn jelly beans. Mm-hmm. Oh, I need 208. Yeah. Um but my favorite uh, salty is um pop secret home style popcorn. Mm. I need 208. 208. Gotcha. My favorite snack is all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're kind of a teenager in that regard. Yep. What is your favorite song? I don't have a singular favorite song. Um, one of the ones that I'm really into right now is from Dermont Kennedy, and it's called Power Over Me. Oh. Mm. Um, so I would say right now it's one of my favorites, but I don't have a singular favorite song. Um, Dad and I have a, you know, how couples have songs. Mm. And ours is the radio edit version from of Secret Garden from Jerry Maguire. So I really like that one too. Mm. Uh, I have two favorite songs of all time, and they both relate to my girlfriend. Um one is one that Gray actually showed me, um, Perfect, from Ed Sheeran. I'm oh, not, I love Sheeran. Yeah, I'm not too into Ed Sheeran, but I cool, do nice. love that song. Yeah, that song is glorious. 
Yeah, and fun. another one is a lesser known one, um, but it's also really cute as well. It's um, called I Do Adore. Aww. And I don't think I've actually showed you that one yet. No, but the title is, it, it does bring to mind you and your girlfriend. Yeah. Um, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to see if she is okay with us showing her and your picture from the aquarium. Because mm. I think that is just too cute. I love that picture. Yeah. So the next song is, uh, song, song, yeah. Yeah. You know, what the next question is, what is your favorite sport? Well, I played volleyball and when I was a kid. And I really I was really good at it and I really loved it. Um I also did track and field, uh cross country. Um so I would have to say though to watch my favorite sport to watch is probably football. Um, but I, I get in the mood for baseball sometimes too, so. Mm. Um, my favorite sport to watch is, um, free running and parkour because. Oh yeah, that is fascinating to watch. I would love to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, but my favorite sport to actually do is a very, very, uh, esoteric, um, and it's actually where I do a lot of my physical activity besides PT. Me and my brother sword fight a lot. Yeah, you guys do the sparring thing. Yeah, we spar out 210. in our backyard all of the time. And... 210. Uh, a thing about me and my brother is that we name every blade that we have. Like, I have a European hand and a half broadsword, also known as a bastard sword yes but that's not a sharp sword it is a training sword yes i just want to clarify that because yeah that's important yes we use training swords we don't hack each other's limbs off we aren't superheroes we're not i know with how many times i've defied death do you think i would be you would think so, yeah. yeah you have, um, uh, you're extremely lucky in that regard. Yes. Yeah, so I have a bastard sword named Alexander after Alexander Hamilton. Oh, I thought it was Alexander the Great. No, mm. because Alexander Hamilton is America's most famous bastard. Oh, well, yeah. Especially after that play. I do hate that term, though. I mean, because it doesn't matter... Well, I guess it did, but when, you know, um... It mattered lineage, back then. It doesn't matter now. No, and it shouldn't matter now. I, I don't know that it should have mattered then, but I am not going to make a commentary on history. Yeah. Uh, we have a short sword named Henry. Um, probably after King Henry. I don't know why Aaron named it Henry. And we've got Annabelle. a wooden saber named Fang. And we've got a ceremonial saber named Annabelle. And then we've got a bowie knife named Marshall. And I don't know the actual name of the type of knife Eli is, but it's basically a mini machete. 310. 310, gotcha. Um, so, yeah, my favorite sport is uh, sword fighting. What is your favorite time of the day? Um, late at night when I come home from work because it's quiet and I have that time for myself, that solitude that I need. Mm. Um, when I was younger, I didn't have as much of a need for solitude as I have going, you know, getting older. Um, and I like it because it's quiet in the house. I also like really early morning for that same reason. Um, because, um, as you well know, um, our life and our house can get very chaotic from time to time. Yep. Um, because there are, you know, there are quite a few of you. Um, yep. I have, how many siblings do you have? Um, in total, we've got... Caitlin kind of counts, so around five. 
Uh, so I have five biological children and then um, we heart adopted um, a, another girl. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in the house right now, there is three of us. Well, right now, right now, there's only two. But living in the house right now is three. Yep. Um. So, yeah, there's a lot of us. And, you know, and me and, and dad and uh, the dog and the cat. And, yeah. Yeah, it can get very chaotic. So I love when it's quiet and I can think. Because sometimes it's hard to think when it's chaotic like that. Mm -hmm. 327. Uh, my favorite time of day is also night, but not just because it's quiet, but... Nighttime is the only time of the day where people expect you to be doing nothing. So <laughs> I can just sit and do nothing without being, like, yelled at for sitting and doing nothing. Oh, well, yeah, it's important that you do your schoolwork and your chores and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you aren't always the best at that. Um, but besides from that, my favorite time of the day is probably the time that I spend with Gray. Yeah, we, I spend a lot of time with my kids. Yeah. I love my kids. I mean, obviously I love my kids, but I love spending time with my kids. Um, and because growing up, I didn't really have a good example of, um, a close knit family. I really, that was something that I wanted. And when I got married, I married a wonderful man who also wanted to have a close knit family. And so we are very close as a family. We spend a lot of time together. We have, as we mentioned earlier, 333. As we mentioned earlier, uh, we have a family game, uh, role-playing game that we do weekly. We also have board game night. Mm -hmm. We haven't and, done that in a while. Well, it's because Aaron hasn't been here. So, mm -hmm. um, and last night, Dad wanted to watch um, the new Star Wars movie. So. Oh yeah, Rise of Skywalker. That's Is that on what Disney Plus called? now, isn't it? All of them are on Disney Plus now. Um, so if you are interested and want to rewatch the Star Wars um, saga. movies, saga, the Skywalker saga, they're mm. calling it, then it's all on Dis excuse me, Disney Plus right now. So This is not an advertisement. We just like the service. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I actually have no intention or interest in watching this movie because... I didn't really like the the last two. Um, I I was not in love with uh, Abrams' take on the you know these these movies, but the uh, art direction and the music direction. Though. Yes, but that is quintessential yeah. Star Wars. Also, you know those those are beautiful um, in all the films. Mm. Oh, I need to put the actual drills in there. Um, 334. Hmm. So, w was I answering a question that, that led to that? And that was kind of a tangent. Uh, oh, board no, game night. You the, mentioned, the, the, the yeah, next... you mentioned we hadn't done it. And that was why we didn't do it yesterday. Because yeah. Monday nights are uh, family board game night. Um, so, but mm. like I said, dad wanted to watch the Star Wars film, so. So the next question is, what is your favorite type of clothing? Um, pajamas. I love, especially fuzzy pajamas. Mm. Um, I don't like the onesies so much because they get so bloody hot. Mm. But I like just, you know, your regular fuzzy pajamas. Um, or, you know, on top and bottom in like jersey knit material for the warmer months mm. i love pajamas my uh one of my uh co-workers the a director of nursing in our crisis center uh when she puts her pajamas on she calls those her glad rags mm. and i always thought that was adorable um i have two favorite types of clothing yes i am very indecisive as you can tell um I always adore my hoodies. If you know me, I... He's got like 50 different hoodies. Yeah. That may be a bit of an exaggeration, no, but not I, by much. We, it's 
in like the 20s. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous the number of hoodies yeah. you have. Um, but besides from hoodies, my favorite um, type of clothing to wear is actually uniforms. Because you look good in uniform. I have stated before, I am in a GRTC program. And by the way, shout out to our service members. Thank you so much for uh, your uh, service. Thank you for doing what you can to keep us free and alive. And I cannot thank you enough for all that you do for our country. Also shout out to their family members because that is an extremely hard thing to handle having the um, maybe the person you love dearest in the world uh, risking their lives pretty much every day. For them. I have so much respect for you. Absolutely. So um, thank you so much guys. Thanks. Yeah. But as many people say, I look damn sexy in the Class A uniform. You do look really handsome in that uniform. But I also look really good in the ACUs. Should I should I uh, throw up the um, Christmas pictures that you took in your uniform? Yeah. All right. I'll do that and I'll put them on, on the screen. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> next question is what is your favorite way to pass the time well you know of course the first thought would be diamond painting um which i do a lot of um in fact a lot of my downtime is spent um diamond painting in one fashion or another doing something kidding up kidding down you know i like to kid up but uh I hate kidding down. That uh, it drives me crazy. I don't know why it bothers me so much or I find it so... I think it's because there's a kind of a, a sense of loss when you finish a, um, a project. It's kind of like the day after Christmas. Yeah, where it's just... You're kind of almost in limbo, really. Right, and it's like, what do I do with my life now? Um... And kidding down kind of is the epitome of that feeling, so I think that's yeah. why I don't like it. But um, so diamond painting is one of those things. I also obviously have mentioned I like spending time with my family, uh, in you know one on one time or all together. I don't care. And um, but another thing that um, I like to do, and I only do it with my husband because we're doing it together. But we watch Critical Role which is a, um, a role-playing uh, game that is streamed um, on Twitch. And the DM is sexy as fuck. He really is. He, I mean, yeah, he, yes. Matt Mercer is very attractive. Um, so if you're into the role-playing thing and you haven't watched Critical Role, check them out. Um, yeah, I have yet to get into them because I don't have the time. Ah, uh, you don't make the time, I think is eh. the correct phrase. But, yeah, did, did I tell you? I know I told Aaron, but um, they did a Cthulhu one-shot. Oh. Oh, yeah. that I, I want to watch that. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to make time for it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's the other... I, I like... Because when, um, on those, when I'm off, my day's off, um, they're usually weekdays, but that's the time that my husband and I, after dinner, will watch Critical Role together, and I'll be crafting on the bed, you know, crocheting, diamond painting, whatever, and we'll be watching that together, so. My favorite way to pass the time, I have, uh... Really, two separate ways. Um, one of them is just hanging out with my online buddies, or as I call it nowadays, just vibing with them. I will just chill for hours with them and just shoot the shit and like have a lot of fun with them. And that is something that I cherish more than anything else in the world, just... Having people that I can just, we don't need to be doing anything and we can still enjoy each other's company. Are you feeling the isolation due to the lockdown since you're not seeing people in person? 
Honestly, not that much because uh, the majority of like my really close friends are online. Okay. The um, only time that I'm like really feeling it is when like I'm talking with my girlfriend or I haven't talked with her in a while because I just want to be able to like hug her. Yeah, and, and you haven't been able to see her in person in quite some time. Yeah, almost a year at this point. Um, just so you guys are aware, uh, his girlfriend lives in Pennsylvania and we live in New York. Yep. You guys met online, right? Yeah, we met online. Um, actually doing roleplay stuff online. Um, so they do get together in person every few months. Yeah. Um, or, well, before COVID, they did. Mm. Um, and after COVID, they will. Yeah. But uh, I'm feeling the the strain of not seeing people in person, which is, it's kind of funny to me because I am not a touchy-feely person, generally speaking. I am not yeah. a hugger. I am, you know, I like, I need my personal space. But th there are people in my life that um can um hug on me and love on me and it doesn't bother me and um i miss that yeah i am very much the same way to the point where i even call myself touch starved jokingly. yeah jokingly because you know we mm. hug and but you guys grew up with um two when it came to physical affection there were two questions. One, mom, can I have a hug? Which, or mom, do you, do you need, need a, a hug? hug? Because if they needed a hug, then <laughs> the answer to that was always yes. Dobby, hush. Um, but if it, the question was, mom, do you need a hug? The answer was usually no. Mm. Unless we, there were the times where you needed a hug. Right. Um... So, yeah, I'm not a, a touchy-feely person um, due to the environment I grew up in. Mm. Um, and, you know, usually the more I trust you, the more able you are to um, physically uh, love on me and interact mm. in that way. Yeah, um, so my favorite way to pass the time besides just vibing with my friends and family is honestly doing work. And that's extremely odd, is especially with somebody whose favorite time is because they are expected to do nothing. Um, what kind of work? So? Uh, either working on documents for like military role play, or even doing freelance voice acting work. Yeah, that's not work so much as it is your hobby. Yeah, uh, you, I, you think I work, I think chores. I do a side job eventually. Or I will be, like, studying things that I want to study or that I need to study for document works. Like, recently I went into Army field manuals that have been public, publicly released to uh, prove points that I was making. So yeah, m work so like and vibing, generally. Yeah, like those are my favorite ways to pass the time. What is the name of your favorite restaurant? Um, so I don't have a favorite restaurant locally here. Mm. But back home, back in New Mexico, my favorite restaurant was called... Let me see if I can remember the name of it because we're talking 20 years ago. Um... I don't know that I can remember it, um, but it was a Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, I also like Benny's, which was a kind of like a fast food Mexican restaurant out uh, back home, uh, but it's not a chain or anything. Um, mm. Other than that, I don't have a favorite restaurant. I have restaurants that I enjoy, but no one singular uh, restaurant. Mm. Um, sticks out as favorite. Yeah, I don't have a favorite restaurant, but I do have a favorite um, 
like general store slash deli. Yeah. Just because of how well I have two because just how close they are to where I am most of the time. We uh, near our house is this general store named Portland. Um. Uh, yes. There's this general store that we have. Boundaries. Um, and then there is also one near my high school. That oh is, yes. Is there's also the Chinese store near the it, well oh, the Chinese, Chinese restaurant. restaurant? Yeah. yeah, that and one you can say the name of. A, yeah, I actually don't know the name of. It's Hung Fu. Oh yeah. So yeah, that is um, my favorite restaurant generally. And the reason that I kind of grumped over you saying the actual name of that store is because our uh, community is so tiny mm -hmm. and um, I need to keep certain boundaries because of the clients that I work with yeah. and I don't want them using, if they happen to find the channel, using that name to find mm, out yeah. where we live. Uh, almost accidentally doxed ourselves, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um... I'm sure we'll do something in editing. Or you know, just leave it as it is and, you know, and, and mm. we're human. We make um, mistakes. What is your all-time favorite town or city and why? Uh, that's a difficult one. I know. I am going to say Elk Grove, which is um, a suburb of Sacramento. Because that's where my mom lives. Mm. And that's my happy place. Besides my own home, that's my happy place. Yeah. My favorite city or town is actually um, Tokyo, Japan. And um, the reason why I love Tokyo, Japan so much is... It's so much more technologically advanced than the Western world. What I don't like about it, though, is they're on top of each other. It's like yeah. sardines in a can. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I am a big tech, tech, technology fan. I, I call myself a techie. You are a techie. Yeah. And when I grow up, I want to be... I want to make... Um, prosthetic limbs for people who have lost their limbs through some manner or were just born without them because my biggest goal in life is to help others yeah well you pretty much have the same uh life purpose as i do to create a world that was better than when you entered it mm. And it's not even a thing of, like, I want to be remembered. I just, you because I could people. care less whether I'm remembered, as long as the people who knew me cherished me. Right. And, and I think that's important, those um, moments that we cherish. Yeah. Um, and making as many of them as we can in this short blink of existence. That got very existential very quickly. Eh, it tends to do that. Uh, what is your favorite candle scent? Linen or ocean. Um, I like those fragrances. I'm not quite sure why I love them so much. They're clean smelling without being overly... And I don't like candles that smell like food. I don't like... Uh, body wash and shampoo and conditioner and stuff that smells like food either. Like, I know people are really into, like, fruit fragrances and whatnot, and that is, or baked good fragrances. That is so not me. Nope. Uh, I don't like it because scent is actually very closely related to memory. And, uh, I don't like people being able to trigger memories like that. Okay, that's understandable. Yeah. Um, but my favorite candle scent, well, isn't a candle scent, it's an incense scent, uh, Dragon's Blood. Oh, yeah, that smells amazing. Yeah, Dragon's Blood incense, 10 out of 10. Um, what is your favorite place to take an out-of-town guest? Um, 
that is difficult. Uh, a lot of people would say New York City. Um, I am not one of those people. Especially um, right now. Well, yeah. Uh, but actually, I don't know. I don't know that I have a favorite place to take um, out of town guests. I have a favorite kind of place, not a favorite place. Specifically? Yeah, specifically. I love taking out of town guests to those small places in your town or like near your house that is just so, well, naturally cozy. Kind of like the fire pit for our house. Right, yeah, uh, agreed. Or um, the Appalachian like a, Trail. A, yeah, portion. or like the river that was near our old, old house. house. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so that is my favorite kind of place to take an out of town guest. What was slash is your favorite subject in high school? Um, my favorite subject in high school was either English or science. It was a toss up depending on what we were learning. Hmm. Mine's not going to be a shocker, uh, my JRTC class, because it teaches you so many different things that are always useful. Yeah, you guys were required to take at least one year of JRTC. Yeah. Daddy and I required that. Because it, it teaches you discipline, it teaches you how to lead, it teaches you financial stuff, it teaches you teamwork, it teaches you so many different things that are always so useful. And I don't like it when people look at JRTC and they say, oh, that's just, that's just for people in the military. Or people who want to go into the military. Because JRTC is not focused on getting you into the military. It's focused on making you a better citizen. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Boy Scouts in that way. Yeah. JRTC's mission is to encourage young people to become better citizens. That is their mission. And I think that that's important that um, everybody has that um, at least attempt to become a better citizen because yeah. we all live here so we need to keep it as livable as possible livable and enjoyable as possible yeah no absolutely um but yeah i am a big advocate for jrtc programs as, I, I am too I mean, to kind of n nail in the fact that it's n not about getting your child to join the military, the army instructor in my JTC program actively discourages us from joining the military. Did he say why? I'm curious. Um, it's actually because he himself had a bad time. A bad it. experience. Yeah, in, bad experience in the military. Did you ask him what made him want to do JROTC if he had a bad experience? Um, or honestly, I can take a guess because uh, I know the guy pretty well. He, he just, he's got that same kind of vibe that we do. He just loves to help people. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he can sometimes so, be a hard in, ass, but. Uh, he believes in the mission. Yeah. Then. Gotcha. Um, so that is my favorite subject in high school. Now, what was your least favorite subject math. in high school? Math. Math. Always math. Math. I don't have a least favorite subject. I have a least favorite type of teaching. Because um, a thing with how I am, and I get it from my father, I believe, is... I pick things up in an instant. No, oh, you. Uh, I gave you that too, but yeah. And so, I hate those teachers that don't let me work to my ability. Like, all of my teachers this year would let me sit in class and 
do the homework because I already understood the lesson. Or uh, if we we're doing classwork that they weren't like teaching, I would get it done and they'd let me go on my phone because they understood that I understood the material. And I hate teachers that don't that either don't recognize that, or if they do recognize it, don't put it into consideration. Mm, it's understandable, I guess. Um. Um, what do you love about your current TV show, and what is it? Um, currently, uh, I guess this qualifies, given that it's, we watch it on the TV. I don't know. I am not much of a TV watcher, um, generally speaking. There are a few shows that I watch, but I, if I watch TV, I tend to binge it um, because I don't like waiting mm. until the next week to find out what happens. I am, in that regard, very impatient. Um, but currently, I the, what Dad and I have been watching that we watch all the time is Critical Role. And that's the time that we have, are, are the... Um, the TV show that we've been watching for a few months now, actually. Yeah. Mm, my favorite TV show yet... Uh, well, it actually was a TV show. Um, and it's been my favorite since I was an extremely small child. Um, Good Eats. Oh, yes. One, the host, Alton Brown, a god among men. <laughs> um, and... He's just an extremely likable person, and that that's a big that's a big aspect for me when I watch anything, even like YouTube or streamers. If they aren't a likable person, I'm not going to enjoy the show. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. So uh, the next question. Well, are you going back to that one, mm. I like that he explains the science of what's happening. Yeah, yeah, I why am are... very into science as well, and I enjoy that a lot. So our next question is, are you scared of heights? And I will add on to this, and how bad? Okay, I am missing a color. No, I am not afraid of heights at all. Um, I'm missing 803. I'm not afraid of heights at all. In fact, um, I do understand that some people are. I'm yeah. um, just not. Okay, so I will have to. Um, look yeah, to maybe this. there. No, uh, so I'll have to contact um, Diamond Art Club mm. and find out where 803B. Mm. Um, I am slightly scared of heights. I'm more, well, I know the science behind it, and I know how easily it can escalate. And that's kind of what made me afraid of it, because... You know too much? Yeah. I uh, um, I tend to be more wary of heights now, because my balance isn't as good as it was when I was younger. Um, hmm. but I'm, doesn't, I'm not afraid. I'm not uh, afraid of falling. That reminds me of one of my favorite memories. Um, during PE, when, um, we'd be playing basketball, kids would always try to, um, quote-unquote, break my ankles. Because most kids, um, shift their balance on their feet, not their waist. But since I do sword fighting, I shift based on the weights. Right, you uh, change your center of uh, gravity. Yeah, which not a lot of kids know how to do unless they're like into wrestling or equestrian stuff. Ironically, uh, that you mentioned that, when Dad and I first got married, we used to wrestle playing around. Mm -hmm. And um, he would try to pin me and I would, you know, forever be centering, you know, recentering. Um, my my uh center of gravity and he's like did you ever wrestle and i went no you know like mm -hmm. um in school and stuff and i went no i've never done wrestling he's like because your balance is incredible 
And it took me almost a decade to realize that the reason I had such a good balance and it did that like almost automatically was because of all the writing experience, horseback, yeah. horseback riding experience that I had. So, but yet yeah, kids would always get infuriated because they could never break my ankles and get the leg up on me. So that is one of my favorite memories. But yeah, I am. I actually got into watching parkour uh, mainly to learn how to make the um, make my fear of heights more manageable because I understand how to make it well less dangerous really. right more safe yeah more safe all right sorry about that guys had to pause for a minute take care of some housekeeping things um but we're back and moving on so the next question we got it is are you high maintenance uh no i don't think i am high maintenance I don't think you are or I am either. I'd, I think I'm actually extremely low maintenance to the point of annoyance to some people because I'm always like, oh, I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Or, oh, don't worry about it. I can handle it later. <clears throat> and stuff like that to the point of some people's annoyance. Mm, no, I can see that, I guess. So, the next question is, are you more inclined to build your own empire or unleash the potential of others? Well, given what I do for a living, and if you are new here, welcome. Um, you know, hit the subscribe and hit the bell. But um, for those of you not new here, I am an addiction counselor, which is all about unleashing the potential of others. Um, but at the same time, I do want to leave something of a legacy behind, but I want my legacy to be my heart. Mm. So, and part of being a uh, heart is um, unleashing the potential of others. Mm. So. Um, I am very similar. Uh, one of my most famous quotes that I have said is, you can fuck with me all you like. But when you fuck with my subordinates, you'll understand that hell hath no fury compared to me. Uh, yeah. Um. Um. I. Well, and that's true of your family and your loved ones too, not just your subordinates. Yeah, those that I care about. Um. I can take a lot of beat up myself, but if you start attacking those that I care about. The gloves come off. Mm, yeah. Yeah, me too. Next question. Are you more likely to avoid conflict or engage it head on? That depends on if I think anything will be accomplished by the conflict. If I know that nothing is going to change if I address something, then I won't, I, I, I will just kind of not deal with it that way. And, and then if it's become such that I can't deal with, whoops, I can't deal with or handle whatever is occurring that is not changing. Wait, weren't you looking for 838? No, it was 80 something, 803. Mm -hmm. 803. 838 is the one I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to if I, you know, believe that something can be accomplished through conflict, then yeah, absolutely. I'll uh, approach that head on. But I want to make sure before I do that, excuse me, A, that I am being fair about things and, and not, and, and, considering the other person's perspective as well and is it fair of me to be upset about whatever uh, before I get into any conflict mm. um, I don't avoid it per se but I well I am a lot like you in the in the way that I will try and 
solved the thing uh, diplomatically instead of um, going head on into a conflict. Because when you get into a conflict, it is very emotionally charged and the it's very anger charged and generally speaking yeah anger is the opposite of rationalism and Mm -hmm. you want to have a you want to have both parties be rational right one is so sorry go ahead the only time that i'd ever engage a conflict head on is when diplomacy didn't work diplomacy fails you're right yeah one of the things that we do a lot in uh the addiction field is teach conflict resolution Mm. um so i try to keep that in mind even when i'm dealing with coworkers and not necessarily patients um because a lot of times people who struggle with an addiction especially if they have a long-term addiction um impulse control and conflict resolution are skills that they haven't really practiced or um perfected or you know become skilled in so part of the work that i do is educating them on how to resolve conflict and um move forward without burning bridges Mm. The next question is, are you a dog person or a cat person? Both. Um, I love um, dogs because they don't care what you look like. They don't care um, if it's 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. They just want to be with you. They want to... They'll love on you no matter what. Um, But cats have interesting personalities that I enjoy so and depending on the cat they too like to be loved on so it really just depends but um that's why I like both for different Mm. reasons what about you if I had to choose between two um definitely cats if I had to choose I'd probably go with dogs Mm. um but to which pet I prefer the most, it's neither dog or cat. It is actually bird. Mm, I don't like birds. We, When I was growing up, my grandparents had um, a lovebird, and he was super, super mean. And mm. I have... He bit me so many times just trying to take care of him that it completely colored how I feel about birds in general now. Mm. I like wild birds and watching wild birds um, out in the yard and stuff, but uh, indoor birds? No, thank you. Um, Also, could you let our pet in Uh, from outside? So while he's going to run off for a minute, um, I want to um, let you guys know that there may not be a whip and chat video next week because I have to go up to Syracuse to pick up my son um, who has been spending a couple weeks with his sister um, and it's time for him to come home again and so my days off um, next week will be uh, spent up there now if um, my daughter and her family want to be a part of the video then i will record a whip and chat it'll be it won't be my current project or this one that we're kidding up now because that's an awful large project to cart with me but i have a couple snack size projects that i would probably do if i if i filmed while i was up in syracuse with them so if you don't see one don't worry, nothing's happened. I'm still here. I'm still gray, but um, I just wasn't able to record and edit a video and still go up and pick up Aaron and come back. Hmm. The next question is, are you a good cook? I am an excellent cook. 
and I think you would agree with that um, assessment Sentiment. of my skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You grew up on my cooking, so. Yeah. Uh, That's a good cook, too. One of, one of my favorite foods, it's not my favorite, is, um, but it's a close second, is your homemade fried chicken. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my grandmother taught me how to make that. And um, I think that's why it has such a, you know, down home mm. feel and taste to it. It's because it's, you know, a family recipe that mm. my great grandma taught her how to make it. So. I wouldn't say I'm uh, the best cook. I wouldn't even say that I'm particularly good since I'm still learning. But you can feed yourself and that's important. Yeah. I don't have to worry about you starving to death after you move out. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm not the best. I'm not n nowhere near the worst. No, you're not. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'm yourself. mediocre at cooking. And I do yourself. plan on getting better. If you had more courage, what would you do differently in your life now? See, it's kind of funny because in the uh, first part of the tag that I did in the other video, which is up in the eye now, um, I mentioned that one of the, the things that I liked about myself was that I was courageous and wasn't afraid to try new things or afraid to be wrong or afraid to not be able to succeed at something and, you know, how I learned more from failure than I did from success. Um... So, I can't say that there is anything that um, I wish I had more courage to do. Um, courage, I, I am not lacking. What about you? Um, that is a hard question. Um... Well, you know, you do have the right to pass on a question if you don't want yeah. to answer it or don't want to get into something. Because that's a very personal question. So yeah. if you're not okay with that, that's okay. Honestly, if I had more courage, I'd probably just stand up for those who need it. Those who can't stand up for themselves. And I do that in, in ways already, but I... You'd be more... Um, overt about yeah. it yeah i can i can get that yeah what is good about how you're living your life right now um well the house is a comfortable environment for everybody mm. um i i love that when you come in when you come home you feel a sense of relaxation and enjoyment just from the environment mm. um i love that we do spend so much time together as a family and do things together as a family on a weekly basis so yeah what about you what about you i'm thinking oh you're thinking yeah yeah when you're thinking you're quiet and so i'm like mm. what well yeah you mm. go you So while he's thinking, I'm going to ride the struggle bus here on the sticker. And um, I'm hoping we're going to find that one color, that 803, that I don't seem to have. But so far, I haven't found it. Mm. And the nice thing about Diamond Art Club is if you do have you know, a, a color that you're missing in a kit, they'll send it right out to you. All you have to do is just contact them. Um, so. I, I think the thing that's good about how I'm living my life right now is that I'm not living it by how others want me to. I'm living it by how I want to live it. And that's important, you know, you can't live... If um, you live your life by others' expectations, you're not living your life, you're right. living somebody else's. 
Oh, and there's color number two that's not in this kit. Uh, 33.25 is missing. I know I have extras of this one, but... Uh, no, I looked over there. Those are the extra bags for mm. colors we've already done. So... So, yeah. 36. If you could eliminate one weakness or limitation in your life, what would it be? Eliminate one weakness or limitation. The fact that I have fibromyalgia. I would... Uh, yeah. Use a magic wand and make it go away. One weakness or limitation. Probably my depression. I thought you would go with anxiety, but I could see the depression being important to. I can work on my anxiety, and yes, I can work on my depression, but there will always be days with my depression where. It's just, well, I can't even get out of bed. The depression thing, that's a genetic thing. And um, it's even enhanced with the ADHD. Right. Because that, of the science of it. Right. But, um, you know, it's not just feeling blue, but that, it's, you know, gut-wrenching. I There is nothing I like to worse. explain it by just feeling tired of life mm -hmm. I would agree with that it's not just oh I feel really shitty it's that I feel tired uh, yeah I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired yep next question who has left the most impact on your life um, my great grandmother and my aunt who I consider my mom Mm. How about you? Um, my girlfriend. Yeah, I can see that. She, she entered my life in a very pivotal time where I was in an extremely dark place. Um, yeah, grandma and grandpa had just passed. After, no, it was no? before that. that. Well, after that, actually, because they passed around third grade and this is more we really started talking sixth grade okay uh, it was extremely dark because i had got to my wits end with all of the bullying that i went through gotcha and i was ready to just give up on any social interaction ever because in my mind, there was something so inherently wrong with me that everybody picked on me. I can understand that. And she was the one that taught me that, no, that's not true. And that... People can just be shitty sometimes. Yeah, people can just be shitty sometimes. And there are people that will care about you. You know, we didn't become aware of the bullying that you were dealing with until it was, you know, until after the fact. And I feel bad about that. I mean, I would hope that you knew that you could come to Dad and I about that. But, um... It was more, I never really realized how much of an impact it had on me. Gotcha. Until after the fact, when I finally got the positive element in my life that wasn't family, hmm. that showed me, yeah, no, you shouldn't be treated this way. Yeah, nobody should ever feel like there is something so inherently wrong with them that people can't be courteous. I, I think that's something that we as people should all work to try and combat Yeah. to so, avoid that. That, and she has been with me through even darker periods of my life. And honestly, I don't understand how. Because when I am deep in my depression, I am not that likable of a person. Um, I can agree with that statement, but uh, I also know that um, people who love you um, 
they are strong so that you have the opportunity to be weak. Mm. And when they are weak, then you are strong. It's kind yeah. of a balanced situation where, you know, uh, work and life balance need to be mm. there. But also balance of strength and weakness and fatigue and energy. And it's all, it all waxes and wanes. Mm. Just like the men. Yep. Um... Number 38. What aspect of your life needs tremendous improvement? Um, speaking of balance, my work-life balance. It's very difficult right now um, because I seem to be needing more personal time than usual because of the environment that and, you know, the state that we are in as a, uh, not just a country, but globally with this pandemic. Mm. Everything take everything that I do at work requires more effort because there are more steps now in order to make sure that everybody is protected. You know, you have the masks and the gloves and the constant cleaning and um, sterilizing. And um, so that adds to the things that I do at work anyway. But more than that... Um, because I am used to being such a social person and I have such fewer, pe you know, few people in my life that I'm interacting with in person currently, um, it, I need more to recharge. I need more to, um, have that re refreshed, you know, ready to go back to the front lines kind of mentality mm. and uh, that's there part. is a red in your yeah every now and again you'll get a, a hitchhiker mm. um what aspect of my life needs tremendous improvement responsibility my self-image oh yeah that too because this goes back to the whole bullying thing because i was bullied for so long at such a young age it was a good six years or so um i developed an inferiority complex mm -hmm. and well and you guys have always been kind of oddballs in in your school environment anyway because you're into you know um, geeky things or nerdy things that, you know, you, you were not, none of you were particularly, um, athletic. So you didn't have the, you know, the whole sports interaction. I mean, you guys did participate in sports, but was it wasn't. was actually the first one. No, Michaela played football. All right. That was the first one of the guys. Yes. Um... But you guys are just oddballs and very, very intelligent. And, um, you know, not many people your age, for example, you're 15. Mm -hmm. I know your voice makes it sound like you are much older, but you are 15. And you look and read philosophy in your spare time. Mm -hmm. That is not common. Yeah. And um, all of you kind of had that... Um, scholar uh nerd type vibe that made you not very popular in in school i mean you have your circle of friends obviously but mm. it they're easy traits to pick on yeah um and so and i think that's also why you guys tend to have more uh smaller friend circles but they're closer knit because mm. you've dealt with that your entire life of just not fitting in and being yeah. different and um, so, so different that it stuck out quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and freaking, I was going to say something, but totally left my mind. I lost your train of thought. Yeah. It must have gotten hijacked. Mm. Right. Um, the intelligence thing, a lot of it was that I didn't try and hide my intelligence, and I, 
a lot of people said that I'm intelligent to the point that it's scary. You you guys are not dumb people. You're you're very bright. Um, and when it comes to thought exercises, you guys have you know thought exercises that blow. They're just so either esoteric or scholarly that it it just it really pointed out the differences between you and average children. Yeah. And I think that was hard for you guys. Um, I know it was certainly hard for me when I was growing up. I wasn't really popular either. I was just an awkward person. Um, and it, I, I struggled to get through um, the awkwardness of it all. I'm just making sure I didn't put really mm -hmm. somewhere that I forgot or can't see. These are all the extras. You might want to put the extras in the... I'm go well, I'm not going to put them in the actual cases, but I yeah. am going to put them in the box. So, we have one last question to end this off on. Who is the best teacher you have ever had? Um, the best teacher I have had, her name is Mrs. Hazlitt. Hmm. And she was a fantastic... She was third and fourth grade and she taught me to love what number is that oh yeah that's an extra mm. uh, she taught me to love learning and how to research and um so yeah she taught me the things that i enjoy now you know you were talking about researching things that interest you mm. uh, she taught me how to do that and she took a, a real interest in my life because i had a pretty crappy childhood and mm. that was a bright point in it so my favorite school teacher is this is going to be a shocker to none but my sergeant major uh sergeant major brian van wagner um he is my favorite teacher because, one, he, he and the other ROTC cadets taught me that it's okay to laugh at myself. Yeah, um, I, I think it's important that you're able to laugh at yourself because other people are going to laugh. And if you can't manage to laugh at yourself, then that's always going to mm. make you feel foolish. And he also is just... He, he would hate me for calling him this if he heard me, but he is very much a ROTC dad. He is very much a father in the uh, school workplace. Um, but my favorite non-school teacher, probably you and Dad. Yeah, what, you, what, what are some of the things that we have taught you without teaching you, you know? Like, there's very much a case of, or not a case of in our family, of do what I say, not what I do. We mm. try to mirror and um, yeah. model what it is that we're teaching you guys. You taught us. A lot of things, but the one thing that you taught us by doing is definitely um, two major things. One, don't just go with the crowd. Ask questions. Ask questions about everything. Question everything. Um, trust but verify. Yeah. That's because Dad and I are Gen Xers, mm. and we grew up being taught to question everything and yeah. so um and it served us well uh, as a generation and it served us well as individuals but that's where that comes from what was the other thing because you said there were two um mm. don't let others define your life yeah i think that's really important all right guys we're gonna head out um Pretty soon there'll be some other videos coming on my channel. So, you know, check those out as they occur. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I've had a ball doing this with Vulcan here. Mm -hmm. And before we go, he did get permission to show his 
and his girlfriend's a most recent picture. So we're going to throw that into the video as we're heading on out of here. So they took this. Uh, don't worry about that. Just um, mm -hmm. put it in. They took this. Um, when was it? It was this past last year. Last yeah, last year. Um... Um, and this was in Scranton, Wilkesbury, right? Yeah. But yeah, this was last spring, I want to say. And I think that's such an adorable picture of them. So that's what we're going to use as our t exit card here. Mm. All right. Until the next time, guys. See you later. Bye.